Hey YouTube, this is Octo, and today I'm going to show you how to make a bucket plugin. This is number four. Uh, this one will be dealing with commands, which are what you type into the text window, so uh, you can actually get uh, results in game. You do this from the server or in game as a player. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just jump right into it since they're pretty straightforward. I'm sure you've already done one. Here we go, open up our Eclipse here. And now we're in the main class of Hello World 2, just as we left the last time. We're going to create some more space down here and start our method where we uh, collect the commands here. So we're going to type in public, and this one is going to be return type of boolean, true or false. Uh, true if it works, false if it doesn't. And usually you'd just be returning true everywhere. Uh, that's what I do, because if it's false, then um, it, it, Minecraft handles that for you. So public boolean on command. That's the name of our method here. We're just going to take the parameters command sender. Sender. This will get the sender of the command. It could be console. It could be a player in game. I've never seen any other kind, so pretty much I just deal with those two. Command, command. This is the command, obviously. <laughs> String label. I've never, ever had to deal with that, so uh, you probably won't either. And uh, array of strings, uh, args. These are going to be the arguments they input. Say if it's more like slash command space and then something and then space again maybe perhaps and so on and so forth. Uh, you can collect those as well and see what they are. Because uh, you may have seen that commands require sometimes multiple parameters. All right, got to import our guys here after we close off the brackets. Import command sender from org bucket command. Same here with command and perfect. So it's going to be read here until we re put a return value, uh, no worries. Uh, we can actually do return true just here to get it off and type in player.send message and just say uh, your command was not recognized. Alright, we got to import the player. So player, player equals casted player sender, there we go. So if the player I'm sorry, if the sender is a player, there we go. The sender is a player, we'll send him a message, the command does not recognize if it gets all the way down to the, at the bottom. But first we're going to check if indeed that sender is a player. So we're going to use instance of. So if sender is an instance of a player, and not a console that is, we will get the command in lowercase. This is important. We want to get the lowercase version of the command, so it's command.getName, which returns a string and we return it to lowercase. And this will give us the lowercase command. Oh, my apologies. Uh, we want the string lower command. <laughs> there we go. String lower command equals command.getName to lowercase. And this gives us a lowercase version of the command that you put in, in string format that we can then use later to check. All right, and then we want to make sure this gets closed off by returning true here at the bottom of the if statement. That way, if it is a player and it executes all the command information, it will return true and end this method. If not, it will flow through, give them a command was not recognized option here, and return true, ending the uh, method here again uh, for completion's sake. All right. So everything we're going to do with our command basically is going to be right here in the middle. All right. So we're going to make a switch. The switch is <laughs> switch right here. Uh, lower command, that's going to be what we're checking. If you don't know how to do switches, I suggest you look it up. It's a awesome Java uh, tool. Alright, so the switch lower command, um, we're going to look for the case, let's say, give sword, right? Because that's what we wanted to do last time. We made a sword, we might as well be able to give it to ourselves. So we'll search um, the give sword as our case. We're going to do something here and return true. Boom. And then finally we gotta have our default. Um, and that's gonna be an error message. Alright, because if it's not give sword, uh, then we don't really know what exactly it is they were looking for. So we're just gonna copy our error message information here. Boom. There you go. That handles everything um, really well. We actually won't need this return true at the bottom anymore since our switch here can handles both cases. So, go ahead and save that just for safety's sake. 
and we got to figure out how to give a sword. All right, so we do have our method here in Itemsmith. This is build weapon, and we want to know how many. We're going to build weapon. Our sorry, new Itemsmith dot uh, build weapon one. So we're going to give ourselves just one here, and so we're going to make that an item. Let's say item stack item equals. There you go. After you import item stack, you'll have the sword item itself. Excellent. And we want to also get the player inventory, so we're going to do inventory here. Uh, player in, or let's just call it in, nice and easy. Equals new inventory equals, I'm sorry, equals player.get inventory. And import inventory, of course. Perfect. And we're going to do inventory dot add item. And that will be our item. There you go. So when you do to give sort, it will handle this stuff and return true. Otherwise, if it's not give sort, it will tell us it's not recognized and again return true. Alright, so that's really all there is to a command. Of course, you'll get multiple cases where you do like maybe give armor, a teleport, uh, stuff like that. Commands are really important to plug in, so you'll expand upon this a lot, I'm sure. Alright, but for now, this is just the basic meat of a command here. So go ahead and save that. And one more thing you have to do every time you enter a new command is your plugin YML in the command section here. We will finally be using it. So you will press enter after commands and do two spaces, I believe. Let me double check that. The number of spaces in, is very important in a YML file. Uh, that's that's how they use you know, four spaces there. Let's get a check. We're going to go ahead and copy one here and just use it as a template. So we got four spaces and then the name of the command. So since ours is give sword, we'll type it there just like that, exactly the way we put it in uh, the case here. So that means whenever they type slash give sword, they will get that command exactly as you type it. You don't need to type the slash here, that's not important. Then you will have four spaces and then two more spaces and this will be description colon. So we're going to do gives a sword. It doesn't really matter what you put here, you could just you could type any for everything if you don't feel like giving it a description. And then six more spaces here and usage. You notice that description and usage are lined up exactly the same here because uh, they're children of give sword. Give sword is the parent node, okay? So you're going to want to remember that give sword has children nodes here and these are going to be the same. So the usage is going to be slash uh, and these are like opening and closing arrow brackets. Any between the brackets is going to be the word command. Uh, I use that the same way every time. I suppose you can do slash command. If you have multiple arguments, you can do arg1. Or if you have two, like arg2, that's fine as well. But I find slash command works. All right. If you need to describe to them how to use it, you could do it in the error message that is sent them in chat. I find that's uh, more uh, intuitive. All right. So once we've got that, our gift sword should work. So we're going to go ahead and export it. Just the plugin.yml. And now you can see why it's important that we include it every time. There we go. Perfect. And we're going to run our server here. So just as we left it, we've got our swords here. You also see I have a gun here from another plugin I was testing earlier. Please ignore that. We're going to do slash give um, sword. But we're going to misspell it just so you can see what it looks like when it fails. Uh, unknown command. All right. We're going to do give sword. Your command was not recognized. Uh, right, so the string here is lowercase, and I entered a uppercase <laughs> letter. So we're just going to do give sort of like that, and also change it in our plugin YML. There we go. So all of your cases have to be lowercase. That way, no matter um, what you enter in after the slash, if it's all uppercases, half uppercases, who cares? It'll all still catch there and give sort. So, there we go, we'll export.
and reload. There we go, perfect. Now let's try to get sword again. And that looks like our sword. It is indeed our sword. Yep, perfect. So it works just fine. Now we've got our sword here. And that's the simple part of it. Okay, so here's where it gets more complex. You gotta add multiple parameters to the argument. So say you wanna give them two swords, you don't wanna create a whole new command. You wanna just maybe add the word or the number two after it, or whatever number you wanna give them. Alright, so what we're gonna do here is give ourselves some space and we're going to check uh, how long the args length is. So we'll do int length equals args dot length and perfect and this will give us how how many uh, arguments we've actually put in so we'll check if we'll do actually another switch in here that'll work just fine switch link and we'll check if it's uh this is actually the correct way to do it here, so that's switching case uh, lineup, but I prefer to indent it a little bit, it just helps me. Alright, so the case it's um, just one argument, that's what we're looking for. Oops, I won't need the quotations here actually, this is an integer. We are going to check if the argument is, let's see if args 0 because that's our first argument and it's going to be the only one we have there uh, dot equals our case and this is going to be 2 All right um, so we want to give them two swords if we do slash give swords space 2 perfect now we'll copy this right here And we'll give them two instead. Alright. And then the default are actually um, case zero, so if there is none, we will just give them the one. There we go. So now if we move it up here into the switch. All right, so otherwise, oh, we actually will just give them another error message here and get rid of that guy right there. Oh, we forgot to return true. Alright, reload and do such good sort. There you go, perfect. Seems to work alright. So let's get rid of these guys here and we'll do slash give sword two. Now to give us a double stack of swords. Uh, we were curious if they would stack and indeed they do. You notice if you unstack them, they won't stack back up, but you get two swords. It's kind of like a pack of two swords. And there you go. Now you've got um, arguments. You can continue to check for longer links for more arguments, such as R. If you do a, a length of two, you can search for arg zero and arg one, uh, and you just have to remember the more arguments you input, it's going to get a little more complicated with the flow. You can see I was having some trouble myself, but once you get it down, it's actually not a big deal. Now that you know how to do commands, next episode we'll be doing teleporting players, which will involve objects like location and world that you haven't used yet and hopefully you'll have fun doing it. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe. I appreciate it, have fun. And as per request, we've got a quiz, so go ahead and click the link here. Post your results as a comment or a pastebin post, and I'll be happy to grade you and help you out. Good luck.